I am myself Dr Rajesh Gubba I am the general medicine educator I hope you are all following the INICT series so as a part of the today's INICT revision the topic for discussion will be the anti epileptic treatment and those uh, learners who did not watch the previous series so please watch the previous series that will be definitely useful for your upcoming INICT exam and for more mcqs related to the general medicine you can follow me on my instagram that is rajesh gubba so let us start with the today's clinical scenarios so what is the today's discussion is about is the anti epileptic drug therapy so like i will be giving you the clinical scenarios with the adverse effects so you need to select the adverse effect which is described is related to which anti epileptic drug so these are the five important clinical scenarios so the first important clinical scenario is a 45 year old woman on anti epileptic therapy complains of acne and increased facial hair growth she is on no other medication which anti epileptic drug is responsible for this ad adverse effect this is one of the very very important and very commonly asked question acne and as well as increased facial hair growth that is associated with the phenytoin so the answer in this question is the phenytoin but phenytoin is associated with many adverse effects so for which i'll give you a mnemonic for adverse effects associated with the phenytoin so these are all the adverse effects associated with the phenytoin the mnemonic itself is phenytoin p stands for phenytoin it has p450 interactions h is your hirsutism e is enlarged gums n is nystagmus y is yellow browning of the skin t is it is associated with the teratogenicity that is fetal hydantoin syndrome where the baby will be born with the cleft palate and as well as the cleft lip O stands for osteomalacia and it also interferes with the B12 metabolism and as well as even folate metabolism and that is the reason why the individual can develop megaloblastic anemia the last word n stands for neuropathies the individual can have vertigo ataxia and as well as headache so why do you think that the individual will have vertigo ataxia and uh, the features is because this phenytoin is associated with the cerebellar syndrome and that is the reason why Uh, the individual will have ataxia nystagmus and as well as the intentional tremors and skin and collagen changes just now we have discussed that is acne and as well as hirsutism and gum hypertrophy and it interferes with the b12 and folate uh, metabolism so that is the reason why the individual can develop the macrocytic anemia that is megaloblastic anemia so this is about your adverse effects related to phenytoin now let me just give you the second clinical scenario that is a 25 year old man presents with visual field defects 2 months after starting a new anti convulsant therapy so which is that anti convulsant therapy which is associated with the visual field changes so among the options which has been given to you the answer is vigabatrin so vigabatrin it is not the first line anti epileptic drug it is reserved for treatment of epilepsy that is not satisfactorily controlled by other drugs so after giving all other anti epileptic drugs if there is no satisfactory control then we give this vigabatrin and vigabatrin in which clinical condition it is used as a monotherapy is in patients with the wet syndrome that is in infantile spasm associated with the tuberous sclerosis vigabatrin is considered as the drug of choice and the common adverse effects with the vigabatrin is visual field defects so please remember v for vigabatrin v for visual field defects so in that way you can remember for longer time now let me give you the third important clinical scenario so the third important clinical scenario is a 21 year old women presenting with status epilepticus complains of rectal irritation after being given an anti epileptic medication per rectum so the individual clinical scenario is what that is the status epilepticus okay sorry uh, nothing is mentioned sorry status epilepticus is being mentioned so like for status epilepticus actually what are the drug of choice see for status epilepticus the first line drugs will be the benzodiazepines right the first line drugs will be benzodiazepines okay so this will be the first line anti epileptic drug but this benzodiazepines they don't uh, cause the rectal irritation 
and what is the alternative which is given for the treatment of her status epilepticus is the peraldehyde so it is the peraldehyde if it is administered rectally it can cause rectal irritation so peraldehyde is a useful drug for treatment of status epilepticus it can it causes little respiratory depression and it is also associated with rectal irritation when delivered rectally as an enema so peraldehyde is another alternative anti epileptic drug whereas benzodiazepines which benzodiazepine we use commonly that is lorazepam or diazepam and what is the difference between these two i'll tell you see this diazepam it is injected intravenously and even lorazepam is also injected intravenously but one of the important adverse effect associated with the diazepam is it has high risk of venous thrombophlebitis diazepam it has high risk of venous thrombophlebitis so uh, emulsion preparations are available to limit this development of venous thrombophlebitis whereas lorazepam it is the popular choice in the treatment of the status epilepticus and what is the advantage of lorazepam or diazepam is lorazepam it has longer duration of action than compared to that of the diazepam and it also has the slower onset of action but what is very important advantage there is longer duration of action compared to that of diazepam so what is that uh, anti epileptic drug used in status epilepticus which will cause rectal irritation that will be peraldehyde next you take the next important clinical scenario a 24 year old man who has recently started adjunctive anti epileptic therapy complains of rash with blisters in the mouth and flu like symptoms so which anti epileptic drug is this so now please remember one of the very very important point that is if the patient develops the rash or flu like symptoms after starting an anti epileptic therapy immediate medical advice is very much required because that can be associated with this lamotrigin and lamotrigin is the one which will be causing this blisters in the mouth and flu like symptoms and whenever you combine this lamotrigin right whenever you combine lamotrigin with sodium valproate right whenever you combine lamotrigin with sodium valproate these two if it is given in a same individual it is at risk of developing the skin problems what are those skin problems such as the steven johnson syndrome and as well as toxic epidermal necrolysis so these two are the important skin problems that can be associated if the combination of lamotrigin and valproate is given so please remember this is a very very important point next so the anti epileptic drug which is associated with the development of rash in mouth and flu like symptoms will be lamotrigin then and you take the last clinical scenario a 32 year old woman on treatment for temporal lobe epilepsy complains of tremors drowsiness and thinning hair she is found to have mildly raised liver enzyme levels so among the anti epileptic drugs which anti epileptic drug is associated with the hepatotoxicity please remember a very very important point that is the sodium valproate it is the one which causes acute hepatitis causing raised liver enzymes and this sodium valproate it also inhibits the activity of cytochrome p450 enzymes so this particular drug will potentiate the activity of any drug that is metabolized by this cytochrome p450 enzyme and whenever you want to start valproate liver function test must be monitored before and during the first few months of therapy and if there is any active liver disease valproate is absolutely contraindicated and valproate it is used as a drug of choice in case of generalized tonic clonic seizures absent seizures myoclonic jerks juvenile myoclonic epilepsy atonic seizures in all these conditions valproate is considered as the drug of choice and let me just give you a mnemonic for adverse effects of valproic acid the mnemonic is valproate itself and valproate adverse effects you should be completely aware because it is the very very commonly used drug v stands for vomiting and nausea a is anorexia l is liver toxicity p stands for the pancreatitis r stands for retention of weight which is nothing but weight gain o is your edema 
is alopecia. So if you take the clinical scenario of ours, like it has been mentioned that there is thinning of hair. So that is nothing but your alopecia. Then one more important uh, adverse effects which has been mentioned in the clinical scenario was tremors. And E stands for the enzyme inhibition, which is nothing but your cytochrome P450 enzyme inhibition. So please remember this. Now tremors, drowsiness and as well as the thinning of hair. So these are the one which are associated with the valproic acid. Okay. Now, now let me take up the discussion of drug of choice for various types of epilepsy. Valproic acid just now I was discussing. For GTCS, atonic and myoclonic and absent seizures, valproic acid is the drug of choice. For febrile seizures during the episode, the intranasal midazolam or rectal diazepam should be given. And for prophylaxis of febrile seizures, you need to give oral diazepam. And absent seizures less than 4 years, ethosuximide. If it is more than 4 years, absent seizures, valproic acid should be given. Infantile spasms, ACTH is the drug of choice. Infantile spasm in tuberous sclerosis, Vigabatrin is the drug of choice. Status epilepticus drug of choice is lorazepam. And refractory status epilepticus, we give medazolam. And lastly, one of the very important point that I have to discuss is the close differential diagnosis. Right? The close differential diagnosis for seizures is the syncopal attack. So you should be able to differentiate seizures from syncopal attack. Now, if you see that, time of onset, seizures can occur at any time, day or night. But syncopal attack usually occurs in the daytime. The position of the patient in seizures, it can be any position, either sleeping position, standing position, supine position, any position. But for a syncopal attack to occur, most of the time, the individual should be in upright position. The onset, it is like sudden in onset in case of seizures and it is a short episode. Syncopal episode, syncopal attacks, they are like gradual in onset. And aura, it is very common in case of seizures, whereas syncopal attack, the individual can have blurring or lightheadedness. That is the features that will develop just before the development of seizures or syncopal attack is nothing but your aura. Color of the lips, it will become cyanotic in case of seizures and it will be pale in syncopal attack. Autonomic features are very common in case of syncopal attack but not in case of seizures. And if you take the duration, duration of tonus or clonus, in case of seizures it is around 30 to 60 seconds, less than 15 seconds will be syncopal attack. Incontinence is very common in case of seizures and sometimes incontinence will be there in case of syncopal attack. And the postictal epilepsy, like it, that is postictal confusion. Postictal confusion is very common in case of epilepsy but not in case of syncopal attack. Motor activity is common in epilepsy where the individual will have tonic and clonic movements and they will have very brief jerks in case of the syncopal attack. Injury the individual may have the tongue bite, right? And syncopal attack, the injury is rare until unless the individual has a fall. Automatisms are very common in case of seizures, but not in case of syncopal attack. EEG will be either normal or abnormal, but in case of the syncopal attack, EEG is usually normal. And duration of unconsciousness will be there for few minutes in case of seizures, whereas for few seconds in case of syncopal attack. So these are some of the important differences between seizures and as well as syncopal attack. So in the today's discussion, right, we have discussed about the anti-epileptic therapy and its adverse effects. So the first one, acne and increased facial hair growth that is associated with the phenytoin. Second, visual defects, V for visual defects, V for vigabatrin. And third one, rectal irritation that is associated with the peraldehyde. And complaints of tremors, drowsiness and thinning of hair that is associated with the valproic acid. Then complaints of rash with blisters in mouth and flu-like symptoms that is associated with the lamotrigin. So these uh, are the part of the discussion in the today's INICT series. So for more updates related to general medicine, you can follow me on my Instagram that is Rajesh Gubba. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow again.